Hello, this is Jonas from vhdelwis.com. Today I'm going to answer this specific question which was posted in the VHDL for FPGA Engineers Facebook group by Eliyahu. And he asks, how can I read a button in VHDL and how can I interact with this button and make something happen when we press the button? And I'm going to create a, an example project right now so that we can see how we can do just that. So I have a new empty folder, button test, and I'm going to create a new file here in VS Code, save the file as top.vhd in the button test folder. I'm going to use my VHDL snippet to create the outline of a new VHDL file. And the entity will be named top and the architecture RTL. And for the signals, we're going to delete the clock and the reset signal because we're not going to use that. Uh, we're only going to use button inputs and LED outputs. So first I'm going to create an input signal named button of type standard logic, so single bit. And then I'm going to create five LED outputs. So uh, LED mode out standard logic. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to show you in just a moment what I'm going to do. And we're going to name these outputs one, two, three, four, and five. LED one, two, three, four, and five. So what I want to do is to control this lattice iStick FPGA board, which I have and which I'm using in my courses. So this is the board uh, and I'm looking at the iStick user manual right now. And what I want to do is to um, control these five LEDs so that when we press the button, the outer LEDs are going to be lit and this in the middle is going to be turned off. When we release the button, the opposite is going to happen. Only this LED is going to be lit and the other four LEDs are going to be off. Uh, and there is no button on this uh, iStick board, but I'm going to just connect the button between these um, header pins on the PMOD connector. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we have already declared the input signals and the input signal and the output signals so how can we read this button and react to it and do something to these LEDs? Well, first we have to create a process. So I'm using the PRO snippet right now just to create process outline. I'm going to give it a label, for example, um, button underscore proc. This is optional. You don't need labels, but I like to do it in VHDL. And in the sensitivity list, what do you think go, goes in here? It's the button, of course, button input. So what's going to happen now is that when there's a change to this button signal, this process is going to wake up because any change to this button will trigger this process because we put the button signal on the sensitivity list. So when we are in this process, I want to do one action when the button is pressed and one when it's released. So I'm going to do that by creating an if statement. If button equals one, so if it's pressed, then we're going to do one thing, else we're going to do something else. And if, like this. So in here, we're going to set the LEDs to something. LED one, it's the value zero. No, it gets the value one actually, because LED one, two, four, they are the ones that, that are around here because we can see here D5, LED number five is the one in the middle. So I want to illuminate the ones around, surrounding the middle one when we press the button, right? So I'm going to set LED one, two, three, and four to one, like this. And LED number five, I'm going to set to zero, just like that. And in the else clause, so this is where we get into when the button is not one, that means it's zero. Then we're going to do the opposite. So I'm just going to change the polarity here, just like that. And I'm going to save this file. So that's all we need. This is how we react to a button press. This one way to react to a button press. So I'm not using the clock at this moment. I'm just using combinational logic. Uh, and um, Somebody mentioned debouncing in the thread already, in the, uh, the question. 
somebody I commented that we need a debouncer and that's correct if you want to use this for example to, to uh, uh, count or trigger some kind of event in a clocked logic uh, design then you need to use a debouncer but that, that's a different story right now we're just reacting to the button and setting the outputs when the button is released or pressed okay so what I'm going to do next is to open ice cube 2 the design software from Lattice. I'm going to create a new project, name it button underscore test. We're going to select the FJ IS40 HX1K TQ144. And I'm selecting this because that's this FPGA. We can also see here that's what it says on the actual device. So we have selected the correct FPGA now and the correct package. So I'm going to press next. And I'm going to import my top.vht file, the one that we just created. I'm going to press finish. And what we want to do now is to map these signals. The entity, we want to map them to physical pins on the FPGA. So how can we do that in IceCube 2? We can do that by using this pin constraint editor. But we have to run through the synthesis step and the, the, uh, the next step too, because IceCube 2 doesn't know about our VHDL signals. It has to analyze our code and we have to run through this next step too. And now you, you can see that uh, pin constraint editor button is no longer grayed out. So I'm going to press this one. And now we see that uh, IceCube 2 has identified our top entity signals, LED 1, 2, 5 and the button input. And we have to assign some kind of uh, some, some pin location here and where are we going to get these numbers for the pins? Well, we can get them from the uh, iStick user manual So let's do the LEDs first because they are the most simple. So these are the LEDs, the four LEDs They are marked here one two three four and five I can see on the silk screen on the on the um, Actual board so I can see that the one in the middle is, is LED number five so I'm going to just go down to the table of LEDs, which is listed in the user manual here, this one right here, board LEDs. So here we can see the, the same labels, D124, and they are 99, 98, 97, 96, and pin number 95 for the one in the middle. So CPLD pin, that's just another name for uh, FPGA or the DFPJ. It's 99 down to 95 in the opposite order. So I'm going to do that. Just assign them in the IceCube 2 software right now. Starting with this one, LED number one. Select um, pin 99. And actually, actually I can just type here 98, 97, 96 and 95 for the one in the middle. Okay, so that's the LED outputs. But what about the button? Well, I told you we don't have any button here, there are no buttons on this board, but I'm just going to use one that I have. Or if you, don't, if you don't have a button, you can just use a wire or something, a jumper wire. I'm going to use this, this, uh, this, this P-mod connector to, to connect something between the ground and this pin right here. <coughs> so um, I'm going to search P-mod to get to the correct page in the manual somewhere down here. There we go. PMOL connector, the left row pins, and actually this is turned the opposite way around than the picture that we just saw. So the right row pins is going to be the one on the left side. Here, so this is the right, oh, this is the right one, this is the left one. It's just turned upside down. And these pin numbers are not the pins on the FPJ. Uh, they are the pins on the, the header, the PMOL connector. But I want to use this one. So I'm going to just take this name and copy paste it and search for it in the PDF once more. It's going to take me to the uh, schematics. At the end of the PDF, there's a schematics. It's going to rotate and search for this pin. And there we go, you can see in the schematics, this signal name that goes to the P-mode connector is going to connect to pin number 88 on the FPGA. 
So I'm going to enter this 88 right here in oh, for the button input. But I'm going to select one more thing and we're going to make this a pull up because this FPJ can do um, can configure the FPJ pins to have pull ups or some of the pins. So I'm going to do that, select the pull up here. And that's because otherwise this pin is going to be floating and I don't want to have a floating input. We're going to have a pull up, which is going to pull the value up to one. And then when we press the button, it's going to uh, it's, it's going to ground it again. And it's going to read a zero value. So the next thing we need to do now is to save this pin constraints file. I'm just going to save it in the same directory as a source file because I consider this to be a source file. So if we go into VS Code now, we can see that the new file, this auto-generated file, is here. And if we click into it, we can see uh, all of the pin numbers in kind of a random order here, but the order doesn't matter. The pin numbers are correct, and we can edit this file now. We can also see the pull-up uh, configuration is uh, it's written here in, in text, so we can edit this file if we want to. So what I usually do is to create a file first in IceCube 2 and then edit it from here if I want to change anything, change the pin numbers or something like that. But now it's all correct, it should be. So we are, I'm just going to go ahead and run through all of the steps by going to Tools, Run All. So now we're running Synthesis again. Place and Route is going to generate the bitmap. And there we go, bitmap complete. So I have already opened the diamond programmer here and configured it with my FPJ or the, uh, the iStick FPJ. And this is the bit file that was generated from IceCube 2 just moments ago. And I've plugged in my board now. I'm going, going to press program to program the FPJ board. Let's see what happens. And the programming completed. So I'm going to change to the other camera and see if we can test the board now. Okay, so here is the iStick, which we just programmed. And we can see already that four of the LEDs are illuminating. So what's going to happen now if you press this button? So I've connected this button, just connected it to the header pins between the uh, the uh, pins on this PMOD connector that we specified between the ground and the PMOD pin that I specified in the code, right? So one pin is connected to the ground and the other one is connected to pin number 88. So if I press this one now, there we go, changes. So that's our VHDL code working, changing from the outer LEDs to the inner LED every time we press the button. Okay, so that's uh, all for this video. I hope it answered some of your questions, at least this one, in regards to how to read input buttons in VHDL on the FPGA board.